Only four months after the 2018 MacBook Pro was released, Apple is now offering new graphics options for the high-end 15-inch model. You can now choose between Vega 16 for an extra $250 or Vega 20 for an extra $350. The performance numbers show just how great these graphics options really are, but let's first go over what's great and not so great about the 2018 15-inch MacBook Pro. First off, it's incredibly thin for the amount of power it packs. The design is light years beyond most laptops on the market. Speaker quality and volume is unmatched. The trackpad is best in class and battery life is exceptional considering the thin size and massive performance. However, the butterfly keyboard just doesn't have very much key travel, and some users hate it, but its design ensures that the MacBook Pro is as thin as possible. But we personally love the new quieter and more reliable butterfly keyboard, which comes thanks to a silicone membrane that protects the key switches from debris. A lot of users also don't like the touch bar, and I personally don't mind it. The display is also not the best out there, with 2.8K resolution compared to some other laptops which already feature 4K displays, but the MacBook Pro's display leads the industry in brightness and color accuracy, and that's what really matters. It's been two years since Apple made the switch to Thunderbolt 3 ports, and the market is now flooded with USB-C accessories, so it's honestly not an issue anymore. With that out of the way, let's get to the juicy stuff. Performance. Since 2016, 15-inch MacBook Pros have only seen minor improvements in graphics performance between the very similar Radeon 460, 560, and 560X. Now, we finally have new graphics chips which pack ultra-fast HBM2 memory. As you can see in this image between MacBook Pros with 560X and Vega 20 graphics, the memory is built right into the Vega 20 GPU package, so it's also getting cooled by the heat pipes, leading to better efficiency. Now let's run some benchmarks, starting with Geekbench 4's OpenCL test. The Vega 20 achieves a 37% better score than the 560X, which is seriously impressive. Now in the metal test, we're only seeing a 23% improvement since the 560X got a considerably higher score using metal. Now in Unigen's Heaven Gaming Benchmark, the Vega 20 got almost twice as many frames per second as the 560X. Now that's an improvement we weren't expecting to see. We decided to install Windows 10 using Boot Camp and retest Unigen Heaven's benchmark, and we saw a much higher 49 FPS. Now that's a huge difference between Mac and Windows. We then tested out Fortnite on both macOS and Windows 10 and saw an average of 20 FPS higher on Windows 10. If you'd like to watch that video, click the card above. Now onto some more serious benchmarks, video editing and Final Cut Pro 10. We started off by stabilizing a 20 second 4K clip, and Vega 20 was almost twice as fast. This is a huge deal for anyone who does a lot of stabilization. We then exported a 5 minute 4K clip, and Vega 20 honestly wasn't that much faster. However, while exporting Canon C200 4K RAW, a more power demanding format, Vega 20 was around 35% faster than the 560X, now that's a huge improvement. We were even more impressed when we tested playback frame rate. Vega 20 was able to play back the 4K raw footage at 31 frames per second compared to 20 on the 560X. That brings it really close to even the Blackmagic eGPU connected to the MacBook Pro. This means that with Vega 20, your 24 or 30 frames per second project will play back perfectly smooth with no dropped frames. Throughout our testing, we noticed that Vega 20 ran cooler than the 560X. Now whether it's efficiency, better thermal paste, or software improvements, we're not sure, but it definitely gives the i9 processor extra thermal headroom. We noticed that the i9 now ran at 2.9 GHz instead of 2.4 GHz we previously observed in our 5 minute red raw export. We then tested Cinebench R15 CPU test to take the graphics completely out of the equation, and the i9 processor scored 57 points higher with Vega 20 graphics compared to 560X graphics, so Apple definitely improved something, we're just not sure what it is. We also noticed that battery life stayed the same even with better performance, and that's because it's more efficient compared to the 555X and 560X. So as far as video editing goes, paying $350 for Vega 20 is definitely worth it for the extra performance that you get. Now let's say you're a photo editor. In that case, having better graphics won't increase performance at all. We tested all three CPU options for the 2018 15-inch MacBook Pro, and the only thing we found that really affected photo editing was the amount of RAM you have. So just buy the base 15-inch model and upgrade to 32GB of RAM. So here's the final question, who should buy the MacBook Pro with Vega 20 graphics? Basically, anyone who pushes their graphics to the limits. That includes anyone doing serious video editing or 3D rendering, and anyone who wants to be able to use their MacBook as a gaming laptop as well. Overall, Vega 20 makes an already superior laptop even more impressive, allowing it to handle the editing of difficult footage like Canon RAW with ease without having to resort to an eGPU. 
The amount of power the 2018 15-inch MacBook Pro with Vega 20 graphics packs is incredible considering its size, weight, and low amount of wattage being pulled from the battery. It's simply a marvel of engineering. Let us know what you thought about this review in the comment section below, and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on more videos like this one. If you enjoyed this video, like it and hit that subscribe button. Also, check out our price guide, which makes it extremely easy to find the best deals on Apple products updated daily. Be sure to follow us on social media, and we'll see you in the next video.